focus and I'm a filmmaker. Usually I tell other people's stories, but this is mine. I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm very close to my family. I'm Greek, so like we had a big family and we all lived in Baltimore, so we spent a lot of time together. I had a lot of role models growing up, especially my parents. I think I have qualities of both my dad and my mom in me. My dad played a big part of who I am. He's got that energetic spark to him, so I, I feel like I really looked up to him in that sense, and he, uh, he's very successful and a hard worker. Both of my grandfathers came from Greece and kind of like started from nothing and, and built something big, especially in Baltimore. I also have two older sisters, and they're about like 10 years older than me. I, I really looked up to them. It wasn't until like middle school, like around seventh or eighth grade, where I started to develop a love for music and uh, specifically like EDM music and like dance music. A big part of that was because of sports. I would always listen to music before sports. And uh, eighth grade, I went to my first concert. It was an Avicii concert. And that really like kind of sparked a lot for me, I feel like. A lot of my friends were athletes and they kind of started to fall into the party scene. And I just, growing up, I was never like about partying or stuff like that. So I, I wanted to be different. And I started to lose a little confidence confidence when I was uh, in high school with that. So I, I started thinking about changing schools and just trying to try something new. When I first switched schools, I was very shy. And that's usually how I am to when I first meet people. And I went to a lesser known school called Gerstel Academy. Gerstel like really brought me up as a leader and like gave me the confidence to find who I am. And junior year of high school, I, I guess I saw some like GoPro videos online and I've always been about like capturing memories and adventures and so I, I borrowed my sister's GoPro and I went on a little adventure with a couple of my friends. The filming was fun but what I really enjoyed was the editing process and more specifically connecting visuals with the music. You know putting a different clip to each beat and just like all the little, I don't know, since I was really into music it just came pretty easy to me. 2016 I decided to go to High Point University. I came into High Point undeclared as a major and it wasn't until the spring semester where I decided to declare my major as business because it gave me the most opportunities after college since I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Fall of 2016 I bought my first camera and I mean I had no clue what I was doing. I just kind of had to learn everything from scratch. I wasn't taking any classes or film classes or photography classes so everything I did was just on my own. The main source of education was probably from just trial and error. Um, I also watched a lot of YouTube videos and just kind of learned through online stuff and just kind of see what other people did. The biggest challenge I had when learning was not having anyone to learn with. Like I kind of was just doing everything on my own, you know, not having anyone to ask questions to or just, I really didn't know anyone in the field. So I was just kind of doing everything on my own and it wasn't until that spring freshman year where I connected with one of my old friends from from middle school. And his name was Tommy Melendez. He was like the first person that I really had the same interest with and like we got to learn together and film together and I think it was a uh, I went home for like fall or spring break and we just reconnected and we went on like an adventure. We started like in the middle of Baltimore City and then we ended up like rooftopping one of the buildings there. And then we would like climb the crane. We're gonna climb the crane. It was just like, it was really cool. Like, I mean, it was very unsafe and I would never do that now, but like at the time it was like really cool to just film with someone. And like, that was my first time filming with someone with like 
a like-minded, you know, attitude about videography. Freshman year of college, I really started to realize this could be a career and, you know, use it as a creative outlet and um, just like my own voice and see if it could be a career. So I came across a couple of profiles and people that really affected me and kind of made my decision to, you know, really take it to the next level. Sam Coulter, Matt Como, Nainoa Langer, um, Jay Alvarez. I saw their social media accounts and their YouTube videos and I was like, wow, like they're doing this for a living and like you can actually make money and, you know, use this as a career. I also came across Rory Kramer who was very intact with the music scene of videos. So he was he was making videos for Justin Bieber and the Chainsmokers and Martin Garrix, uh, Dre, Kanye, like pretty much any artist. And I found his profile and his name through the Chainsmokers because they were one of my favorite artists at the time. And it was just, I, I came across his profile and I was like, oh wow, you can, his job is to like literally travel with the chain smokers and make videos for them. And I thought that was the coolest thing. What up, it's Rory. He showed us a video one day of uh, Rory uh, on TV and he had shut the, uh, the, the TV off for a second and said, this is the person that's made it. This is the person that I admire. This is the person that I wanna be mentored by. And uh, we said, sure, if you think you could get there, Weekends, I would do road trips and I'd use my camera as much as I could. I started reaching out to companies through Instagram. I had reached out to this artist called Young Bombs and I sent them one of my videos and they enjoyed it and they're like, come out to this, this festival called Shaky Beats. So I was like, all right, this is the coolest thing. And so I got that job and I was very excited and that's really like, that was probably one of the, the happiest days of my life was like being on stage and like shooting for an artist who I always listened to. Since I, I've always loved music, it was really fun to connect with the artists and then being on stage. I did an internship with a production house in Baltimore called Story Farm. And I, I learned a lot about just like the business side of video and corporate videos. Once sophomore year came around, I got back to school and I, I actually decided to take a couple film classes. That fall break, Tommy and I decided to travel to New York and actually make a video outside of Baltimore together. I had, I had gotten reached out by this company called Movement. It's a watch company. And they, they sent me a couple watches. They worked with a lot of the artists that I looked up to, like Sam Coulter and Rory Kramer. And so Tommy and I traveled to New York and we filmed like three three days in a row, it was really fun. The brand itself ended up making a contest because of it and had us win the contest as like the video of the year. And I remember like Sam Coulter saw it, Rory saw it, and we were like freaking out. When it was the first time one of my videos got a lot of attention. So it was December of 2017. I got reached out to by uh, Kevin Issa, who worked for Tim Sykes. He was his videographer. So Tim Sykes was doing a lot of charity work and community service around the world. And he was like, we're doing a trip in December. You should come. And we went to Mexico for some charity work. And then also like we would adventure on the days we weren't doing charity work. The trip was with like a bunch of big models and photographers. Just It was just like people I looked up to. and. I remember like the first two days of that trip, I didn't shoot much cause I was, you know, scared to ask anyone and just kinda, I, I didn't feel like I was as talented as anyone else there. Charlie Jordan came up to me and she was like, hey, let's go take pictures. And I was like, wow, this is like insane. Like she's one of the, the prettiest people I've ever met. Like <laughs> this, is, this is pretty cool. We just really connected and that whole trip, we were like, you know, trying new stuff and like, She's like super creative and just talented and actually being on a trip with them was crazy. And it turned out Tim really liked my work and I ended up, he, he offered me to do more travels with him. So that was the pushing point to me taking a semester off of school. He sat down with my wife and I and he discussed maybe taking a semester or two off 
uh, in pursuing this photography that uh, dream that he had started with a couple years prior to that. So we sat around talking and because of the past history of my dad not finishing high school because he had to take care of his family financially and myself, I never finished college uh, because of our business. Uh, I understood where Evan was pursuing and I thought there was a good opportunity that he, if he thought there was a career there and he had the passion to do that, that he would pursue it. So we were 100% for him. After I decided to take a semester off from there, I was going to Hawaii on another job with Tim Sykes. I was there a day early and I got to greet everyone as they came in and Rory came in and I was like really excited to meet him. When Tim picked me up from the airport, he's like, oh, you gotta meet this kid. His name's Evan, he's a big fan of yours. And so and he just kind of told me how he got into video and that I was a huge inspiration for his work and doing what he does. And he showed me some of his work and I thought it was great. There was about like 20 people on our trip and me and a few other of the videographers, we did a lot of adventures on our own and Rory was one of those people and we just kind of connected. It reminded me a lot of myself actually. And so me being 35 and him being 22, I saw a lot of myself in him and I knew what it was like to be at that age and wishing I could do what I do now at that age. And my job didn't really exist. So being able to kind of like mentor him and uh, allow him to shadow what I do was uh, something I was very excited to allow him to do. And we did another Tim Sykes trip to South Africa, which was insane. And it was one of the coolest trips I've been on. Like we got to play with like wild cheetahs and we went to like a penguin beach and we, we took like a helicopter over Cape Town. Rory and I became great friends that trip. And then Charlie Jordan, she also came to Hawaii and South Africa. And we just, I pretty much was making videos for her in addition to the ones I was making for Tim. So like, I was just making personal videos for her and she really loved that. And you know, I was, I like, I wasn't getting paid to, but I was just doing it for fun. And it's, I think it's very important to just offer your services to people and build that relationship. My next big trip was with Rory Kramer. We went to Vietnam together for a brand and he just, he was like, hey, I need some help filming. And after that, he, he saw my potential and just knew that we worked together well. I was looking for somebody to kind of take some of the workload off my shoulders to, so I could bring on more work just because I was getting so much busier. I came back to LA a couple months later and we shot a chain smokers project for American Airlines. And so one show was in LA and then one was in Philly. So the LA show I helped him shoot and, and then the, the Philly show I shot on my own. And that was really cool, like just actually shooting for the chain smokers since they've always been pretty much my favorite artists. So after the American Airlines project, I started taking pictures and making videos for Charlie Jordan. I did a few trips with Charlie after that as her main videographer. Another big trip I went on was with Movement. They were the ones I did that like New York video for. And it was, it was just like a bunch of friends and I got invited to like shoot like a little recap of the, the week. And it was like a dream trip. Like it was literally all the best videographers like Matt Como, Sam Coulter, Rory Kramer. It was really cool to just be in that environment. And one of the kids I met was, his name's Jeremiah Davis. His Instagram's that one blonde kid. And uh, we just, we stayed in touch after that trip. And when I visited LA again, I stayed with him a couple of days and he had me help shoot behind the scenes of a Chainsmokers music video. And we just like, we connected and talked and we were both like, yo, let's, uh, let's move in together and like find a spot. So a couple months later, I moved to Venice. We never knew there was a LA and that's where his dream was. We thought he was just gonna stay here in Baltimore.
that I did a project with Insta360. Got to bring two of my best friends, Charlie Jordan and Rory Kramer, which was very special to me because they both brought me on many trips and jobs before, so it was cool to, you know, make my own job and be able to bring them along. You see the difference between two and a half years ago and how he matured and how his, his understanding of photography grew uh, when, when I saw him this year with, with Roy going around those same places. My family was in Greece at the time and I got to like go to a place where I grew up going to and see family and just, it was a really cool project. Uh, another big project I just finished up was Moonrise Festival. I had the opportunity to lead on all video content and produce and direct the after movie for the whole festival. And another cool aspect of that was it was in Baltimore and it was one of the first festivals I ever attended to. I've gone pretty much every year the past four or five years. So it was cool to actually, you know, be backstage and, you know, be with the festival owners and all the artists. To see him head up a project like Moonrise where he was in charge of probably about 10 to 12 other shooters was really cool and it's something I could not see myself at 22 doing. I got to bring out some of my LA friends, but I also got to bring out the hometown kids I used to film with, like Tommy, and you know, it was cool to combine both of those parts of my life. Another big project, Rory was approached by this company called The Nations. It's a music channel, so they just have like a visualizer, but they want to start original content. So uh, we went to India, like I was just there to like to film Rory's like, you know, all these kids coming to see Rory, but I got there and I was also the one getting surrounded by people like asking for pictures and, you know, autographs and stuff like that. I've always wanted to go and to be able to take someone on a trip of my own and get to allow someone like Evan to experience that part of the world and that culture uh, was really cool. Roy Kramer and Evan's relationship is quite interesting. I think it's phenomenal. Here's Roy's been in the business for many, many years, and here's Evan just growing. Uh, there is a uniqueness that uh, Roy saw in Evan that would help him, and uh, I think they helped each other. I kind of feel like an older brother at times, so having somebody like Evan who's so much younger, it's fun because I know how to pick on him and like, kind of bring him out of his shell because he's a shy person and I was a very shy kid as well. So to have someone like him who's younger, we just, we kind of gel like two brothers, like older brother, younger brother. We, when we're not filming, we're playing like hot shot basketball, we're going to get food, we're just hanging out, hiking, watching The Office. We're getting to travel the world and work with uh, big name brands and big name artists and just do what we love. Like we just shot Justin Bieber's wedding. Justin one night at church was like, yo, do you have like, do you have any guy that like, you could bring that you really trust that um, could help shoot the wedding? I wanna make this like the sickest video. And I was like, yeah. And like the first person in my mind was Evan because I enjoy being around him and he takes a lot of the anxiety and the pressure off. I get asked a lot like from people, like how do I get in your position? And like, how do you do what you do? And just like, you know, meet all these cool people and work with all these cool people, but it's really about like just just kind of being yourself this whole the whole way through. A big thing with me is I haven't drank alcohol yet or like kind of done anything like that. Not doing all that stuff has definitely impacted who I am as a person and kind of people see that and know that like I'm very professional and just kind of you know stick to who I am and really work hard. I was in the bakery business and I worked six days a week and over 12 hours a day and I knew where my future was when my father first took me, took me into the bakery when I was 11 years old. Now here comes Evan along, starts to, take, starts to travel and starts to become a photographer. You know, usually people just like kind of follow their, their parents and like take over the family job, but my dad has always been supportive and obviously my mom has also been my other biggest fan. To see Evan go around the world in places that I never even dreamt of going is, was, it makes me feel good. It makes my wife feel great. I'm very big about quality over quantity and just kind of making sure every post and what I share on Instagram is 
you know, meaningful to me and something I believe in, which also plays a part of like the different brands I work for and different people. I am quiet, so I've always used video as like an outlet and kind of way to communicate with strangers and just like using video as an outlet to tell stories and like for me to talk and all that has been great, but I'm still developing my voice and like kind of getting comfortable to talk in front of camera. This opportunity came about, about wanting to document and kind of tell my story and like show people that are in this, in or want to be in this industry, what I've done and how it's possible. Evan has saw something that he liked, something that he saw a passion for, and he pursued it. I am very, very honored to have a son that did that. I am extremely happy in Los Angeles. I'm really happy with the move, but eventually I'd love to move back to Baltimore, like start a family and all that. You know, start my own company and kind of, you know, bring on different jobs and help other people out and just kind of, you know, have one big community. Where I see Evan going in the future is just bigger productions, bigger commercials, bigger brands. My advice to Evan is still the same as when he first asked to leave college to pursue this dream, is to uh, make sure financially <laughs> he's okay and to pursue it as long as the passion's there. My name is Evan Paterakis and I'm a filmmaker. Usually I tell other people's stories, but this is mine.